Welcome to Review Central. This is DOST reviewer number 6, featuring questions on mechanical technical. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the DOST scholarship qualifying exam. In the mechanical technical sub-test of the DOST scholarship qualifying exam, you will be performing tasks that will measure your ability to acquire information about everyday physics and to comprehend mechanical relationships. It consists of mechanical and electrical problems, as well as items that deal with physical forces. This reviewer is aimed at preparing you for that subtest. There are 13 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous DOST qualifying exams. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Question number one. How can gears be used to change the speed of a machine? A. Use more gears. B. Use two large gears. C. Use two gears of the same size. D. Use two gears of different sizes. The correct answer is D. Use two gears of different sizes. Changing gears on a 10-speed bicycle is a good example of using different sized gears to change speed. Gears use the principle of mechanical advantage, which is the ratio of output force to input force in a system. For gears, the mechanical advantage is given by the gear ratio, which is the ratio of the final gear speed to the initial gear speed in a gear train. Question number 2. A crate is sitting in the center of a flatbed truck. As the truck accelerates to the east, the crate moves with it, not sliding on the bed of the truck. In what direction is the force exerted by the bed of the truck on the crate? A. Sideways B. To the east C. To the west D. There is no friction force, because the crate isn't sliding. The correct answer is B. To the east the direction of force exerted by the truck on the crate would be the same as the direction of the truck's motion. Question number 3. You are playing with a ball on an uneven surface as shown in the figure. If the ball moves from point A to point D across the surface, what is the difference between the gravitational potential energy at point A and point B? A. The potential energy at A is greater than the potential energy at B. B. The potential energy at B is greater than the potential energy at A. C. The lowest potential energy is located at point A. D. The lowest potential energy is located at point B. The correct answer is A. The potential energy at A is greater than the potential energy at B. Gravitational potential energy depends upon height, as evident from its formula, potential energy, PE, equals mgh, where m is the mass, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the height. Since point A is located at a point higher than point B, the potential energy at A is greater than the potential energy at B. Question number 4. Choose the most closely related tool or object for the tool shown on the left below. The correct answer is B, a hex head bolt. The picture shown is that of a socket wrench. From the choices given, a hex head bolt which is tightened and loosened by a socket wrench is most related to the given tool. Question number 5. During Lara's piano recital, a pure musical note causes a thin wooden panel in the school theater to vibrate with the same frequency. This is an example of A. Diffraction B. Interference C. Resonance D. An overtone The correct answer is C. Resonance. Resonance happens when one object vibrating at the same natural frequency of a second object forces that second object into vibrational motion. Question number 6. Given the set of front and rear wheels, which bicycle will reach a greater distance upon one rotation of the pedal? A. Bicycles W and Z B. Bicycles X and Y C. Bicycle W only 
D. Bicycle X only. The correct answer is A. Bicycles W and Z. The bigger the driving wheel, that is, the rear wheel, the farther the distance it can travel with one rotation of the pedal, because the circumference is larger compared to a smaller driving wheel. The size of the front wheel is of no consequence since it is only freewheeling. There are two bicycles with bigger driving wheel, bicycles W and Z, therefore the correct answer is answer choice A. Question number 7. A current of 5 microamperes flows through a wire. How many coulombs of charge have passed through the wire in 10 seconds? A. 2 times 10 raised to minus 5 coulombs. B. 5 times 10 raised to minus 5 coulombs. C. 15 times 10 raised to minus 5 coulombs. D. 50 times 10 raised to minus 5 coulombs. The correct answer is B. 5 times 10 raised to minus 5 coulombs. The coulomb, symbol, C, is the unit of electric charge in the International System of Units or SI. It is equal to the electric charge delivered by a 1 ampere constant current in 1 second. In formula, number of coulombs equals current in amps, times time in seconds. Take note that before doing any computation, make sure that current is expressed in amperes and time in seconds, otherwise the resulting answer is not in coulombs. In our given problem, we simply substitute the given values for current and time, and multiply them together, as follows. 0.000005 amperes times 10 seconds equals, 5 times 10 raised to minus 5 coulombs. Question number 8. In the figure shown below, gears A, B, and C are connected by a chain. The diameters of the gears are 2 inches, 4 inches, and 8 inches respectively. If gear A is turning at 20 revolutions per minute, what is the turning rate of gear C? A. 5 revolutions per minute. B. 20 revolutions per minute. C. 40 revolutions per minute. D. 80 revolutions per minute. The correct answer is A. 5 RPM. The diameter of gear C is 4 times the diameter of gear A. Since the gears are all connected by a chain, the tip velocity of all the gears must be the same, otherwise, the chain would come off the gears. Therefore, if the tip velocity is to be the same for all gears and gear C is 4 times larger than gear A, then gear C must be turning 4 times slower than gear A. 20 RPM divided by 4 equals 5 RPM. Question number 9. A range through which medium does sound travel from the slowest to the fastest? 1. Solid. 2. Liquid. 3. Gas. A. 1, 2, and 3. B. 1, 3, and 2. C. 2, 3, and 1. D. 3, 2, and 1. The correct answer is D. 3, 2, and 1. Sound travels fastest through solids because the particles are closest together. It travels less quickly in gases because the particles are further apart. Check out this table comparing the speed of sound in different media. Question number 10. Different types of blocks are subjected to burning wood. If the same amount of heat from the burning wood is absorbed by the rectangular block at a given short time interval, which block has the hottest top surface? All blocks have the same length, width and thickness. A. Copper B. Aluminum C. Steel D. Brick The correct answer is A. Copper. The material with higher thermal conductivity will have the highest temperature on the top surface given that all blocks are introduced to the same amount of heat from the burning wood. From the four materials, copper has the highest thermal conductivity. In fact, copper is used as a heating element in most of the devices that produces heat such as flat iron, electric stove and water heater. On the other hand, brick has the lowest thermal conductivity among the four materials. It is often used to dissipate heat in furnaces or fireplaces. Aluminum has a higher thermal conductivity compared to steel. Question number 11. In a projectile motion, for a given initial velocity v, an angle theta which is less than 60 degrees, determine the projectile that will reach the farthest. A. Projectile W B. Projectile X C. Projectile Y 
D. Both projectiles X and Y. The correct answer is B. Projectile X. Recall that in a projectile motion, the reach is defined by the equation, x is equal to vi, times cosine theta, times t, whereas the time of flight is defined by the equation, t equals the quantity 2 times vi times sine theta, over g. Where vi is the initial velocity, angle theta is the initial angle of projectile, and g is the gravitational constant. Let's substitute t from the time of flight formula into t in the range formula, and then simplify. We should arrive at the equation x equals vi squared times 2 cosine theta sine theta, all over g. Recall the double angle trigonometric identity, 2 times cosine theta sine theta equals sine 2 theta. Let's substitute this into our resulting equation. We'll end up with x equals vi squared times sine 2 theta, all over g. For our final step, we proceed to test for varying values of angle theta and initial velocity to find out which scenario will result to the greatest range. Let's start with angle theta. For angle theta less than 45 degrees, the value of sine 2 theta is increasing as you increase the value of the angle. But for angle theta greater than 45 degrees but less than 60 degrees, the value of sine 2 theta is decreasing. From here we can conclude that increasing the angle will not necessarily result to a greater range. Now let's test for varying values of the initial velocity, vi. For initial velocity vi, the range x is increasing as it is the square of the initial velocity. Go ahead grab your calculator and test for varying values of theta and vi to fully appreciate the principles involved and understand our solution. From our test we can therefore conclude that the farthest distance is projectile x, because the initial velocity is twice the value of the other two, even though the angle remains the same. Question number 12. Which of the kites illustrated below will fly the highest in the shortest possible time? A. Kite 1 B. Kite 2 C. Kite 3 D. There is no difference among kites 1, 2, and 3. The correct answer is B. Kite 2 will fly the highest in the shortest possible time. But why? The diamond-shaped kite is probably the most recognized type of kite today. For centuries, it has remained popular due to its stable and reliable flying characteristics, as well as the fact that it does not need much wind to fly. Modern diamond kites, sometimes referred to as eddy kites, after the designer who added a bow in the crossbar, are typically made with a dihedral that helps the kite to maintain its shape providing maximum sail area to catch the wind and consequently, increase lift. Question number 13. Multiple holes of the same sizes are drilled on one side of the container but at different heights. The container is filled with water, which of the following will be the flow of the water jet on the holes? A. Illustration A B. Illustration B C. Illustration C D. Illustration D The correct answer is Illustration B. In Torricelli's theorem, the velocity of a discharging fluid on a container is defined by the equation, velocity v equals the square root of 2, times the gravitational constant g, times the height of the fluid h or the vertical distance between the fluid surface and the point of discharge. Hence, the lower the location of the holes, the higher the discharge velocity of fluid. Therefore, illustration b is the most probable depiction of the flow of water from the container. You have just completed DOST Reviewer number 6, which featured questions on Mechanical Technical. If you wish to watch more DOST Reviewers for the Mechanical Technical subtest, check out our DOST Mechanical Technical playlist. Check out also our other DOST playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central, and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming DOST scholarship qualifying exam.